welcome back to my channel. Ow. So today's video is just going to be fairly subdued and quite relaxed because I have just had my very first instalment of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccination. I'm so, so happy. I'm a key worker so I work with lots of different people every day and I live with vulnerable family members. And oh, it's just going to be so nice not to have to worry as much anymore. So um, yeah, I have my funky little right there. Um, my, I had it a few hours ago. My arm is quite sore. Um, I'm sort of getting a bit queasy on and off from when I had it. Um, my dad had the same vaccine and he said that that's the same thing that he experienced um, and I have a little bit of a headache but other than that no side effects at all. Anyone who knows me will know that I have a chronic phobia of needles. I've mentioned it before um, on this channel but yeah it was very very difficult. If you are extremely nervous around medical stuff or needles and you're getting the vaccine or you know obviously that you will be getting it at some point, I would recommend lots and lots of deep breathing. I started doing breathing like really really deep intentional breathing uh, for about 15 minutes before I left to go to the um, vaccination centre um, my dad also, um, because he was driving me, he had the brilliant idea of making me sing while I was in the car because he knew that it would distract me so I sang um, one of the songs from Sweeney Todd um, which helps because you can't hyperventilate when you're singing. <laughs> um, so that was really great. Um, if you are extremely nervous, at least this is how it was in the test centre that I went to, they do let another person in with you. The nurses, I cannot praise enough. They were incredible, so kind, really, really understanding, really gentle, made me feel incredibly safe and that it was okay that I was really nervous and that it was okay I was in the state that I was. Um, and kept me afterwards for a few minutes just to make sure that I was able to stand and everything like that. So they were amazing, thank you so much to those nurses. So I'm pretty much just gonna keep my arm here <laughs> for most of the video, I think. So for today's video, it's going to be all about how to start a YouTube channel. This is a question that I get asked um, every so often from people who are like, how do you get started? What do you do? Now obviously I'm not a massive successful crazy channel with thousands of subscribers or anything but I have been doing this for a few years and I know a thing or two about how to get started so I just thought that I would share some of my knowledge and show you that you can start a channel too. So I will begin with why I started my channel. Um, those of you, there may be a few, will know that this was not my first channel. Um, I actually started on YouTube doing singing covers um, when I was in sixth form and that channel is still running. It is called Rianne Kelly the Vintage Soprano. I will link it in the description. Um, most of my covers, I say most, all of my covers have now moved over to IGTV on my Instagram um, under that ha same hashtag, the Vintage Soprano. Um, but I do have a few good performances on my other YouTube channel. Um, I started this channel which was originally called Rian Kelly Beauty to do makeup tutorials. <laughs> I'm laughing because I never do those anymore. Yeah, I was really into beauty and makeup channels at the time. I watched so many of them and I loved them and I wanted to do that too. Um, so even though I wasn't a master at makeup, and I'm still not, I wanted to give it a go and I started uploading tutorials and my oldest videos, I've said it a million times, are not the best quality, but guess what? They don't need to be. So <laughs> all you need to start a channel is an idea of something or some things that you really want to talk about and that's all you need. 
Um, so there are so many YouTube channels about millions of different things. There are lots of vintage channels, kind of like mine, beauty and makeup tutorial channels, hairstyling channels. Nope. Oh, okay, just dropped my phone. Um, this is why you have a like military proof case on your phone. Okay, so where was I? What was I talking about? Moving or moving away from like beauty and fashion and all those sorts of things. One of my friends has a really, really awesome YouTube channel that I will link in the description of the video. It is called The World Building Institute and he is a really amazing person but he is a DM in Dungeons and Dragons and he does super, super complex world building and stuff and he created a YouTube channel and he has videos all about building fiction narratives, world building obviously for different genres, so horror, fantasy, ideas for characters, character concepts and all that kind of thing. So he does really really high quality amazing videos um, and you should all go subscribe to him because he's really really cool. But I know so many people who have amazing ideas for channels and your channel can be about anything you want. If you want to create a YouTube channel specifically dedicated to the etiquette of eating cheese in France in the 1800s, then do it. There will be a niche of people who will freaking love it. All you need is an idea or a topic that you are passionate about, that you have ideas for content that you would like to create. So some people prefer video essays, some people prefer more straight to camera talking videos, some people prefer montages, some people prefer short films or skits or comedy sketches or tutorials. There are so many different kinds of videos on YouTube and you can either dabble in all of them or you can you know, set yourself a very sort of specific niche that you would like to create videos in and there you go. For starting a channel, the main things you need are obviously a YouTube account. Um, you will need a username, so some people will create very fancy monikers for their channels. So for example, mine started out as Rian Kelly Beauty and as I got more and more into the vintage scene, I didn't really feel like that suited me very well anymore. I wanted um, a name that was just kind of a bit more cool. It was funny because it was around the same time as everyone was kind of dropping their more um, experimental usernames and going with just their normal names, but I didn't want that and I came up with the name A Very Vintage Darling. Miss Lady Lace has an amazing video on creating a pinup name that I think would be kind of applicable to this. Um, so you can incorporate your name into your channel. Um, oh god, oh god, oh god. I've completely forgotten where I was in my sentences. Maybe filming a video straight after I had the vaccine wasn't a good idea. Yeah, so you can incorporate your name into your channel name or you can just name it kind of after what you talk about. So for example, my friend's channel, The World Building Institute, The Take offers their take on different pop culture moments. Once you have come up with your name, then you can create you can use a channel icon and create some channel art. The more eagle-eyed of you who follow me on Facebook especially um, or have kept up to date with both of my YouTube channels will have noticed, I hope, that I have some spiffing new channel art designed for me by the beautiful and wonderfully talented Sally Jones Art. I will leave her information in the description as well and um, she created these amazing illustrations of me um, and I'm so thankful, thank you so much Ali, they're so beautiful and she very kindly allowed me to use them in my channel art. So both for my Vintage Soprano channel and for this channel, A Very Vintage Darling, I now have beautiful channel art. Um, and also on my blog, which I have created a new blog, it is called A Very Vintage Darling Pinup wordpress.com and I have already uploaded a couple of articles onto there including a review of the amazing vintage aprons that Fabric Creations have sent to me so I will link the website in the description 
Everything's just gonna be in the description of this video, okay? Everything, including this amazing jumpsuit, which is from Miss Candy Floss, and it's new, and it's beautiful, and I thought I would wear it today to help mitigate the stress of, <laughs> of um, the vaccine, and also because this has tulip sleeves, so it can pull up very easily. 10 out of 10, and it has pockets. Pockets. So then you have channel art. You can create this. There are so many free websites where you can create your channel art. Um, I think my first channel art was um, designed with the help of my friend Callum Howard, who is now part of a media company that I believe is called Limitless Media. I will, again, link them down below. They do really cool um, media creation for companies. They're really, really good. And he helped me create that. Um, you can use sort of a clip art style, you can get an artist, commission an artist to create some work for you that you can use. Um, I will leave a couple of names of websites that I have used to create my channel art. For your icon, you can just either use a picture of your beautiful face or a logo if you have one, and that will do just fine. Now, for your videos, you know, the main part of a YouTube channel. Um, it's good to have videos kind of explaining who you are, what you're about, um, and then just creating videos on any topic that you like. So you can film on either a video camera. I currently use the, yeah, um, <laughs> the Canon Legria HF R806. That is the camera that I have right now. It was quite expensive. I think it was around 300, 200 to 300 pounds, but it is really good and it does everything that I need it to. My first camera was actually a hand-me-down from that friend I mentioned, Callum. He was upgrading his camera and he gave me his old one, which was really awesome. Quite a few of my old videos were actually just filmed on my phone and all of my singing videos are filmed on my phone because when I sing into this camera I blow out the mic, um, <laughs> the inbuilt mic on the camera because I don't have an external microphone. You don't need one a lot of the time, just my opinion. All you need for creating good videos of yourself visually um, is good lighting, so I'm standing in front of my window, um, I filmed in front of my window when I was in my old house as well, um, a fairly quiet environment as much as you can get it, so um, my editing software, which I'll talk about in a minute, has a noise reduction thing that I had to use a lot in my old house because I lived on main road, um, so there was a lot of traffic a lot of the time, but this um, where I live now is a bit quieter so I don't have as much of that problem but trying to reduce a lot of the background noise where you can and a good visual setup so whether you want to be in more of a portrait shoulders up whether you want a bit more of yourself I tend to want a bit more because I want to show off my outfit then having your background so I have my nice Audrey Hepburn poster, my nice poster that's um, currently covered in sunshine so you can't see it but it's really pretty. So tend to get a nice background with some of the stuff that maybe shows what your channel is about. I know some people that film in their shed or in their loft, in their bedrooms. I feel like YouTube started off with just people filming in their bedrooms and I see nothing wrong with that kind of content. Once you have created your video, what you want to do is, of course, edit the video. For my first year on YouTube, I just used Windows Movie Maker to edit my videos, and it took an age. Editing beauty videos especially took forever, um, and editing can be quite a time-consuming process, depending on, obviously, the kind of video that you're making. So I know Apple products have iMovie built in, which I've heard is a pretty good um, movie editor or film editing software. I personally use Wondershare Filmora level 8. I don't use Filmora 9. Um, I did get that upgrade, but I hated it. So I, <laughs> I just went back to the Wondershare Filmora 8 package because I find that it works really well. It's really intuitive and easy to use and 
um, I find that I get good quality videos out of it. But when you are creating your YouTube, it's up to you whether you want to do it more recreationally, whether you want to kind of try and create a brand. So I obviously have gone a little bit more down that route, which I know people can find a little bit obnoxious. Um, but I don't really care, it's all just really for fun. Um, so my branding name I suppose would be A Very Vintage Darling and then for my singing it would be The Vintage Soprano. Um, I like having everything kind of under that name. I use Instagram and Facebook to kind of advertise and promote my YouTube content and I just find it to be a lot of fun. You don't have to take yourself too seriously, it's not an indication that you're too big for your boots if you're starting a YouTube channel. It just means that you want to do something fun and different and you have opinions that you want to share with the world, just the same as it would be if you were writing a blog. So I think starting a YouTube channel is really, really amazing. I would definitely recommend it. You can talk about things that are important to you or you can make fun and uplifting content for other people. You know, even when I feel really, really sad and kind of low, YouTube is something that kind of gets me excited, gets my creative juices flowing. I find it's a massive confidence builder. So I used to be mortified when anyone would say, oh, Rianne has a YouTube channel. Um, I would just, oh, I would just cringe and die inside. And now I'm quite happy to tell people. I don't go around blaring it to everyone I meet, but if I find the opportunity to bring it up, then yeah, I'm quite happy to. Um, I don't find it really embarrassing anymore. I think that just possibly comes with feeling more secure in myself and not really caring as much about what other people think, obviously. I think it's a great confidence builder. It teaches you about promotion, it teaches you about video and sound editing, branding, marketing, loads of different things. So I would definitely recommend if you have something that you want to start a channel or start a blog about, just go for it and you might be surprised and good things can happen and it can also connect you with lots of really amazing people. Um, I know I've met people at events like Pin Up In The Park before who have actually come up to me and said that they follow my YouTube channel and it's just been <laughs> absolutely insane to me that anyone would like know my YouTube channel before they know me. Um, and that's like, I'm tiny, imagine how all the big creators feel must be really overwhelming but I hope that this video was slightly coherent good luck editing me um, in organizing my rambly post vaccine thoughts on creating a YouTube channel um, I have McDonald's en route chicken nuggets are coming to me I'm so excited and I will link again everything that I mentioned all the channels I mentioned will be linked in the description do check them out and I love you all so, so very much. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Please remember to have courage and be kind. And remember that all of your dreams can come true. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! This is the cutest thing in the world. And I'm so obsessed with it. My hair is like, lost a lot of the pink now. It kind of looks like the first time I dyed my hair, but I don't mind, it's pretty. Um, ooh, bug. Go away. Ugh. Oof, I'm gonna lie down now. <laughs>